Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. Saturday Night Special, episode 86. We're getting real close to that 100 mark. <laughs> but I got a few things to talk about today. Uh, just real quick, some stuff to point out. And I've got a, a really cool flea market find from last weekend. I'm gonna pull that over here and show you. We got uh, one uh, viewer box that showed up. We've got a couple tools in there. We're gonna check out and uh, I've got some machining to show you and got some other stuff to talk about. We'll get to that. So uh, I wanted to point that out. First off, we've got our American flag hanging in the back there now. And that was given to me by Bob at the, whenever I was at the, the Summer Bash over at the Barzy Summer Bash. Uh, Bob's banners, flags, and signs in Apple Valley, California. And this was, he said it was uh, presented, donated by name which is the North American Association of Machinist Educators. And they uh, picked me to uh, give me a flag. So Bob, there it is. We've got it hanging back there and I uh, hope, it, hope it looks good to you guys. I, I like it back there. So that was about the only spot I really had. Plus it's, it's a nice backdrop for behind the machines here and everything. So uh, thank you very much, Bob, for the flag. I really appreciate it. And uh, I think it looks good back there. This uh, this is the roller here. You guys will probably remember uh, last couple episodes that we were doing some machining on the roller. Well, this is it. This is the finished product right here. Okay. Uh, the shaft I reused out of an old one. So that's why it's got a little bit of the darkness on there. Uh, just polished it up. And we reused it because it's still good. It's on size. But that's what it looks like. And again, if, if you're curious about seeing how this thing is built, I do have a series on building an 8-inch roller early on on my channel. I think it's called 8-inch eight roller, eight roller assembly. So you can go back and check that out. All right. I showed you my granite plate last weekend, and I'm really enjoying that. I haven't moved it yet, but um, I've been already using it, and that's turned out to be something really nice to have around the shop. I haven't used it for any kind of measure, and it's kind of like a little workbench there. And there's been a couple guys that's mentioned that I ought to build a top for it. And I think that I will. I'm in no hurry to build a top for it. But that granite plate, it's not like it's brand new. And I'm not out here trying to measure stuff with intents, you know. So I'm going to be using it as, as a more a precision workbench, really. But we might make a top for it in the future. Uh, maybe make it out of some wood. So we'll we'll get to that another time. But that's that's a real nice addition right there. I had a couple more things I wanted to mention to you. One of my videos on the channel, Large Lathe Work, it peaked one million views. I believe that was last week. It peaked a million views, and I thought that was a huge milestone right there for my channel. That's the that's the only video that's that's reached that amount of viewership on it so uh, that seems to just be a really popular video on my channel everybody seems to have one that's really popular and that one's mine and I got a few behind it but nowhere near a million views so uh, thanks all you guys that's uh, that's watched that and uh, and showing your uh, support there on that hopefully we can make it to uh, another million views on another video that'd be pretty cool so I wanted to give that a mention. And uh, also, real quick, I want to give a mention that uh, I've got the Patreon uh, uh, page set up now. I had a bunch of people emailing me about that. So I went ahead and checked into it and, and did a little bit of research, talked to a couple guys, and I went ahead and started that up. And that's, that's strictly volunteer basis right there. I had a lot of guys asking me about that, saying that they wanted to contribute. So I set that page up. And I'm still learning about that. I'm very new at it. So I'm still learning how to, how to run that page and the things that I need to do there. So as, uh, as a little time progresses, hopefully that's gonna get a little bit better on the Patreon side. So if you're interested in Patreon, check the links and you can go to it, check it out, okay? And uh, that's probably about all I'll say about it at this point, okay? So. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get to this uh, flea market find that I got last weekend, okay? So this was the odd score that I got last weekend. <laughs> and whenever I seen this, 
first person I thought of is our is our old machinist teacher there, Mr. Pete, over on YouTube. He's got one exactly like this, and he did a video on it on showing how this thing works. And I walked by this guy's table, and I seen that there. And Mr. Pete's the first guy I thought of whenever I seen it. And I, I kind of picked it up and looked at it and thought, man, that's really neat right there. And I asked the guy what he was asking, and he said he wanted fifteen dollars for it. And I thought that's that's not a bad buy. But I put it down and I walked away, and then I got down a few tables. And you know what? I I kept thinking, I'm like, man, if I don't buy that, I'm going to regret it because I really liked it. So I turned around, I went back, and I picked it up, and I said, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this. So I got this, and he also had some uh, some real big aluminum, like industrial cookie sheets, like for an industrial kitchen. I bought two of those, and uh, for this and the two big aluminum sheets, I've given $20. So this thing actually works. I just need to get a hose for it. And one of my viewers had uh, told me that you can still buy the proper hose for it from Napa, and I think uh, O'Reilly sells it too. So I, I need to get some proper hose for it. But I've got plans in the future to maybe make this into, like, uh, say, like a doorbell outside the shop door here. Maybe set it up where you can come up and uh, you know pull the pull pull on the hose or squeeze the hose and make it ring. I thought that would be pretty cool, or maybe even have it hooked up to the driveway so I know when somebody drives in. But it does work, I already tried it out. I just, you know, you have to, I got a little piece of hose that I stuck on there and I kind of puffed on it and it made it ring. But it does work and it looks brand new on the inside too, so. That was my little flea market score and I probably wouldn't have even given it a thought if I didn't uh, see it on Mr. Pete's video. So, gotta, gotta thank Mr. Pete for that, so. That's it. So these are the tools that I got this week uh, uh, in a in a viewer viewer gift box. Uh, this was sent in by Bruce Canry. He's from Lyle, Illinois, and he said that he was going through some of his stuff and he was cleaning out and he found these tools right here and he wanted me to have them, so he sent them to me. One is this big reamer here, and it's kind of an oddity. I don't know how this thing was originally made, but somebody's somebody's adapted it I'm not really sure it looks like there might have been a weld bead right here but this is a two inch shank so somebody somebody probably built this for one special job where it went up into a two inch shank holder and they were going down and reaming holes with it but uh, it measures one inch 590 I believe on the diameter so it's kind of a an odd size all right, so we got that, and then this uh, this big drill right here. This is a one and twenty-five thirty-second. It's a four, uh, four flute. Uh, this probably could be considered like a uh, gun drill. You know, it's got the pilot here, so I'm thinking this might have been used to drill counterboards for like big cap head bolts. That's what it looks like to me. And then there's another another old taper sink drill right here that he threw in the box. One and 3164. Thank you very much, Bruce. Nice tools right there. We'll get them cleaned up. This one I'm gonna have to take to work and while we'll, we'll put that down there. Uh, the other two just gonna go in the box. I don't know if we'll ever uh, use this right here, but that's a pretty good size reamer right there. So thank you. So I'm gonna I wanted to just give a quick mention. You probably noticed we've got some activity going on over here on the KNT mill and we're doing good. We're, I'm working on the machinist vice now. I just started that last weekend. That's going to be the machinist vice that I'm helping build as part of the toolmakers collaboration. And I think I had a couple guys ask me what, what that was. That was organized by Brad Jacob over his channel, his basement machine shop. And he organized a, a, a group team effort deal where everybody kind of picks a part to make for a, for a, a specific item this case is being a machinist vice. So I'm gonna be machining the main body of the machinist vice. I got one of the drawings right here, I'll show you. Hopefully without blowing the video out too much. So this is the main body of the machinist vice uh, used for like, you know, tool making, that kind of stuff. It's gonna be completely hardened and ground. So that's what I've been working on. 
is uh, my part, and we're using the K&T like I was hoping we could, using the, the face mill that was given to me by Lane Sisson. And we're going to have a whole video series on that. So hopefully the first part of that series is going to come up after s and s So be on the lookout for that. And I'm going to show you, you know, how, how it progresses. Probably a few episodes of that at least because there's a lot of machine work to be done on it. So just wanted to inform you. We got, we got a little KNT action coming, all right? So let's go ahead and get to the rest of the footage. Uh, I picked up a couple new tools this week, and you're going to see that when I bring them in. And I've also got a new product that was given to me uh, for free to try out. So we're going to do a little bit of demo and, or, you know, a little bit of trial with it and see how, how it works. Me and my brother, he came over and helped me. So we're going to throw all that in there. So let's go ahead and get to it, okay? Thought I'd share a couple of my recent acquisitions that I got. This is one that I've been eyeballing for quite a while. And we finally, once... Once I knew that the Kearney and Trekker mill was going to be working for me, I knew I could use it. I went ahead and uh, made the purchase on this vise. At the same time, I also bought this piece here. And, and I'll show you that a little bit closer on what that is. But I actually bought this, these, these tools here from Kevin Burkett. He is the owner of the Electrical Guitar Company. Uh, some of you guys might have heard of that company before. If not, uh, do a Google search and you'll figure it out. And he builds fully CNC machined aluminum guitars. And he's here in town. And I've been over there a couple times and a and, uh, real nice guy. Uh, he's got an awesome shop over there. And he hand builds all these guitars that he sells. So he had this and, and uh, he had another big vice over there too. But I wanted to get this for the Kearney and Trekker. I wanted to have a nice big heavy duty vice on it. And he had that, he wasn't using this anymore. He bought it and was using it on, he's got a big Haas, uh, VF3 I believe is what he uses to uh, make his guitars on. He's also got some of the, uh, the ProTrack uh, bridge ports. But he was using this at one time and he said it was just too big and too powerful. <laughs> so he ended up going with the, uh, you know, the classic D688 type vices. And this was just collecting dust, so uh, he sold it to me. So I picked it up. Uh, I didn't play, pay flea market prices, but me and Kevin worked out a good deal. And these are high dollar vices right here. So, and as I said, I got this piece here also. And I thought this could be come in handy for different setups. It's kind of like a, uh, a pallet. It's got all these tap holes in there. It's, uh, it's hardening ground. Got a lot of tap holes and it's got the uh, the T on the bottom and this thing is heavy too, man. It's it's probably about an inch and three quarter thick. Okay. Ooh, it's heavy. It's got a V on the top here. We've got tap holes that go through. We got tap holes on the side. All right, it's got the key machined onto it so it lines up with your slot there. Looks like you can use half inch hold down hardware or you can just use a uh, toe clamp anywhere on it, on the base here that you want. But I haven't cleaned this one up yet. I've been working on the vise. I haven't cleaned it up yet. But that might come in handy around here, man. You know, bolt this thing up. Let me see. get that thing bolted in and you might have some kind of odd job that you can just clamp down to this if you want to come in use your horizontal spindle to come in and do some drilling or boring or milling or something like that so you never know it's just something that you don't ever see I don't know how common they are it could have been just a shop made tool but yeah I got that from him also so the uh, device here been sitting around a little while, kind of had a little bit of, it had a lot of dust on it and a little bit of surface rust on the top of the jaw, so I just did a full clean on it in scotch Bright, and it's ready to go. I'm going to get ready, I'm going to clean this table off, and I want to set this thing up. But So we'll have actually a couple little projects that we got to do so that we can use this vise right here. 
right. it, it included these really nice uh, the T-bolts. He threw those in with it. You got the nice heavy duty washers. But I'm gonna have to modify the T-nut part of the bolt to fit the slots, okay? They're a little too big. So we're gonna have to do some milling on here so it'll fit in there, all right? The other thing I wanna do is make some lineup keys for it. I like my vices to be keyed so that they drop down on the slot and you know they're square. That's the way I prefer mine. So you go ahead and flip this thing over and it ain't light either. All right, so there's the bottom of the vise, and I did a nice clean job on that. There was a couple of real fine scratches that was in here, and I stoned it real good and got it flat. And I wanted to point out something else that I noticed with this. So, or I guess early in its life before Kevin had it, it was on one of the, the uh, angle uh, bases for it, okay, so you can pivot. All right, I noticed right here on both sides of the corner right here, when I was stoning it, you could see there was a high spot right there. It was like a rolled edge, probably two or three thou. So it's evident that whoever was using this early on, whenever they would swing this thing and pivot, they were hitting it with who knows what, maybe hammers, hopefully like a lead or something, but they were bumping it there to get it around and that rolled the, the edge. So. Keep that in mind if, if you do that with your vices and you decide that you want to clamp it flat down on the table, you know, in, in parallel with the table there, you may have some high spots back here if you're if you're hitting on it thing. So I've got it nice and stoned and everything's good and flat now and clean. So we're gonna bolt it straight down to the table. But you see the slots here? This is where I'm gonna make some keys. We're, they, they're, uh, they're gonna be step keys. What is this, three quarter? 13 sixteenths. So, um, you know, point, point 0.812. We're gonna make some step keys and then the table slot on the Kearney and Trekker is five eighths. So I wanna make two step keys for it and we'll be able to bolt it down. We've gotta modify these. And then the other thing was that it did not come with the original handle, like, uh, you know, like the a factory style handle from Kurt did not have that so we're gonna have to make a handle for now we can use a 7 8 wrench but I do want to make a handle for the thing and we'll probably do the uh, like the style that Tom Lipton showed with a big ball bearing on it use a wrench but I don't know yet we might we might change it up and do something different so that'll be a future project for me okay so uh, today's Sunday, so I think I'm going to come out here and I've been working on this. I'm going to go ahead and get the little mill set up and get some step keys made. And I want to get this thing bolted down today. So I'll show you what I do along the way, all right? All right, so I'm going to modify these T-bolts here to fit the, the T-slot on my uh, Kearney Trekker. I already checked it, and this thickness here I think is going to be spot on. It's going to be good. So what we need to do is reduce the thickness here so that it'll slide through the slot. Now I told you 5 eighths earlier and that was incorrect. It's actually 11 sixteenths. So I thought I would do some little extra for a couple of you guys. I know some of you like to read metric. So this is gonna be around 17 and a half millimeter. All right, uh, for our standard guys, that's gonna be 0.687 of an inch. There's not a lot to take off. So that's only a 16. These are three quarter right now. So I think that was around 19. Yeah, so it's about 19 millimeter. And we'll be taking it down to around 17 and a half. 687, that's 11 sixteenths of an inch or 17.4 mil. All right. So you're gonna use a 5C collet block and a three quarter collet holding the threads here. I'm gonna use my little pocket level. And what I wanna do is just get this leveled up as close as I can. All right, that looks pretty good. 
Let me just snug that right there. And then I need to tighten the spanner nut right here. Okay. Yeah, looks like it moved a little on us. All right, you see what I'm doing here? Let me fine tune that. And then once I get that level to where I want, we're just going to, you know, I'll probably slide it down here. We'll do our milling and then we'll flip it over, mill the other side, okay? All right, we got that first one set up. So let's go ahead and touch off and then we're gonna take, let's see, we need to take a 16th off of it. So we're gonna touch off and uh, move the table up 30 thousandths. need to mill this area too because that's going to be up in the slot area so we'll move it not quite an inch over I'm sorry half inch all right and that should be enough Come back and I'm gonna come back to my zero. Should, yep, gonna line up there. All right, flip the block over 180. And what I did is I line up the edge of it with my scale. I just line it all up with the edge of the vise here. Okay. And we'll make it cut back through there. Okay, now we can just take it out of the vise just like it sits and go try it. Uh, I went over and test fit it and it's it's right on size. It's measuring 0.688, so I need to take some more. And I think I'm gonna have to end up touching the top of these or the width of the this area here, top and bottom also. I'm gonna take another 5 thousandths and see. I wanna try to keep them fit in the slot good so we're just going to take a total of ten thousandths off of it all right we'll try it again okay i went and test fit it and it, and it fits here good now. What I need to do is trim this area a little bit. It's just a little bit too big to fit fit down in there. Nominal size is gonna be inch and a quarter, and I measured it being like 1.260. So I've got my knee set on zero so I can drop it down. Uh, let's see. I'm not even gonna count it. I'm just gonna come over here. We're just gonna touch it and clean it up. That right there will probably do the, do the trick. So we'll flip it and do the other side and then we'll show you how it fits. Okay, 
So this is, this is it right there. Nice, nice fit. Very close fit to the slot. And we've got adequate clearance here now, so you ain't got to worry about that. Might even be a little close on some of them if there's, yeah, like right there, there's a, there's something hanging it up on that slot, so I'll have to reach in there and file it, but. All right, there we go. One more to go, and then these will be ready. All right, we got our T-bolts modified now, and they fit the slots good, and I ran a tap through the nuts and got them cleaned out. We'd, wire wheeled our threads did our machine work so they fit nice both of them fit real nice real close those are going to be some heavy duty studs to uh, hold that big vise down so this part's done alright so the next step is going to make some lineup keys for the slot here to go on the bottom of the vise all right, you're sitting on top of the uh, bottom of the, the D80 Kurt vise. What I'm doing is measuring the slot. And this is a good good use for our stair adjustable parallel, see? I believe this is the D, I'm sorry, C, 154C. So if you want to measure what that slot is, you can stick it in there and just kind of Squeeze it so that you know you're pretty pretty snug And you can stick a mic on it So I'm measuring the slots 0 0.810 810 nominal size is 13 16 for you metric guys. That's going to be about 20 and a half millimeter Just over 20.5 millimeter so I found a piece of 7-8 square stock, so we're going to mill that down to fit here, and then we'll have to step mill it to fit the 11 16 uh, slide on the canty table. Alright, here's a piece of 7-8 square stock that I found. I beat blasted because it had some rust on it, and this will be our two step keys right here. I'm going to make them inch and a half long, so I'll get them milled here, and then we'll just go out there to the power hacksaw and cut them off. Using that that uh, three uh, three tip insert mill that I got. We'll just go ahead and take about half of what we know we got to take, which right now is uh, about a sixteenth. So I'm going to take thirty thousandths, and then we'll remike it. I'm going to take this down to a 3 8 thickness. That'll be uh, 3 16 in the vise and then 3 16 down inside the slot there. So I'm just going to use a rough mill. And I set up the little Noga Cool, the little Mini Cool. I'm going to try that out over here on the mill. It's not really in the ideal setup the way it is. It's just kind of rigged up, but I think it might work pretty good. I've got her regulated down. And Seems to put out a nice little mist of coolant there, perfect for milling. Okay, I'm just making the last cut, just to uh, bring it to the thickness that I want, 3 8 stick, and then 
and after this I'll have to do the uh, step mill, make the steps on each side. I'm going to use a little Jefferson power hacksaw to cut them off. I'm going to cut them off inch and a half long. It helped if I plugged it in first before I turned the video camera on. <laughs> I got her set up and we're, we're ready to mill the steps on it so we're going 3 16 down and we're going to be taking a 16th off each side we're going to try to make our slot width there 0.685 I did a measurement with the uh, adjustable parallels and I was getting around 685 with the adjustable parallels so that's kind of what I'm going to be shooting for all right ain't a whole lot let's see how it does I got everything set up locked and zeroed I'm using a 3 8 four fluid end mill Okay, I'm gonna do my offset. I've already got I've already got everything zeroed. So it should be inch and a sixteenth. Okay, let's see, let's see what I got, where I hit it at. Very nice, 684 and a half. Let's see what that one is. Same thing, 684 and a half. So I think we're good to go. Hopefully that'll, <laughs> hopefully those will fit. I'm going to take them out. We're going to do a deburr with the file. <clears throat> Actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and set up. I got to drill a hole and then do a counter bore for a little uh, quarter 20 cap head bolt. So I want to get that done first and then we'll go test fit everything. Okay, we got our two step keys made, drilled it, and then counter bored it for the quarter 20 cap head bolts. All right, here it is fitting the, the vise. Fits there very nicely, it ain't too tight where you're having to drive them in. You can also put them there so you can run your vise parallel to the table. So, all right, before I bolt them down, let me just come over here and I'll show you how they fit the table. They actually turned out really nice. They fit the slot good. They're not too tight, so I won't have to like drive the vise down in there. And there was a couple little dings right along here. I had to go in there with my file and just kind of file it so that it wouldn't jam up. So there we go. We're ready to bolt them on. And again, we got our nicely machined T-bolts. So we're, we're just about ready to bolt it on. All right, Kevin's gonna give me a hand 
setting that bastard on there. You ready? Yep. There it is. Nice. Just barely feel it, man. Look at that. That looks like it was made for it. That looks good. Yeah. There's Stella. Everybody's always asking about Stella. <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a more proper fit for the size machine. I agree. All right. Still got to make a handle, but we're going to get to that later. For now, I can use a wrench on there, but we're going to get to that. So that will be the last project for this big vise right here. All right. All right, time to do some heavy milling now. <laughs> 